Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen and Life Coach Cindy Chavez here. Today is Tuesday, February 13th, 2018, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Your first daily dose of happy for the day. And uh, we're off to a great start today because very early this morning, we passed the 22,000 play mark, which is really exciting. And uh, what's even more amazing, we, we typically average somewhere around 200, 250 plays a day. Cindy, we've just started the day. We're already over 300 plays, and we've got like 18 more hours to go in the day or something like that. It's crazy. Wow. It's just That's crazy. Fantastic. It's fantastic. Yay. It's just amazing what's happening. I mean, the growth is just, it continues. To, I mean, 300 plays in a day, that used to be three months worth of plays a year ago. <laughs> That's so great. That's fantastic. I think about that and I say, we're doing in a day what we used to do in three months. That's just incredible. (laughs) Congratulations. Well, well, I think that speaks to your vibration. I mean, and and all the co-hosts, but this is your baby and you started it a long time ago. And and all the work that you've put into it and all of your um, vibrational alignment to it, it's just, it's starting to gain momentum. It is, and and I thank you very much for that, but I really do have to share the wealth because this latest growth in the last few months would not have happened without you five co-hosts. So I am equally grateful to all of you because, I mean, I've said it before on each one of the podcasts with each of you that you all bring incredibly different perspectives and really good perspectives to the topics we talk about. But you also help me personally. I mean, it, I don't remember who said it, but one of you said, it's like I get a free coaching session every day in the morning and every day in the afternoon. And, and I hadn't thought about it, but it's true. I kind of do, really. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, it's great. I love it. I, I mean, the, the, the fact that this is growing so well, yes, this is certainly a dream of mine that's been going on for quite some time, and it, it's really picking up momentum. But there is no way this momentum would be happening without you guys. You guys have been fantastic. So I just had to say that, too. Well, so, thank you. It's, uh, it's great for us, too. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I know it is. So how's, uh, how's your week been? Did you have a good weekend? Yeah. Um, the weekend was great. And then, you know, we had Monday yesterday that was a regular Monday. But here in Louisiana, it was actually Lundi Gras, and today is Mardi Gras. Uh-huh. So today's a state holiday for us. You and, said that um, before the podcast. I didn't realize yeah. Mardi Gras was actually a state holiday. It's a state holiday, and it's so funny because I work for myself. Um, like the last, I think this might be the first year in the last maybe, I don't know, 10 years that I've actually, at the beginning of the year, went into my calendar because, you know, my, my iPhone calendar, my Google calendar, I mean, they're going to show certain holidays, but I have to mark this one as an actual holiday because what would happen is it would be, you know, the Saturday before Mardi Gras, and I would realize, oh, no, you know, the handsome sweetheart's office is closed because he always closes for Mardi Gras. It's a state (laughs) holiday, so downtown is closed, and, you know, he works in the uh, legal field, so it's like, you know, there's nothing going on. Right. Um, and so I would realize that I had clients and I had things scheduled and he would be off and I'd be like, oh, no. no. <laughs> so I'd be calling clients like, can I reschedule you? Because it's not here. <laughs> so I was so proud of myself this year because I actually, I think it was like the first week of January, I had the light bulb over my head. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go mark that off. So. So Yay. after uh, after the podcast today, my office is closed. And Yay! We're having a holiday. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's great. That's great news. You get to take the day yeah. off. Hooray! <laughs> take the day off. I'm not going to. I'm not going to New Orleans. Um, I'm not that brave. <laughs> <laughs> I keep saying someday I'll go. Someday I'll go to New Orleans for Mardi Gras. I mean, it's about an hour from here, so it's not that big of a trip. But um. That's a lot of people and a lot of things going on, oh, but yeah. I'm sure they're all having a really great time, and we're going to have a great time here. <laughs> so, I mean, I have been to so New what's Orleans. What's going on with you besides this amazing growth in the podcast? Did you have any other fantastic things happen in the last day or so? 
You mean, you mean that's had, not enough? Heard that, yet. <laughs> that to me is everything. It's, it actually, it actually really is. I'm sure, I'm sure that just that has, has kept you like flying high. You it even, has. Probably a hundred other great things have happened. You haven't even noticed. You're like, woo! There actually have been a lot of good things happening, but and that's kind of the way it works, isn't it? When you get yourself into yeah. that good place, all kinds of stuff happens, and and now you actually have to take inventory to keep track of all the good things that are happening. So let's see, what are the good things that are happening? Um, uh, well, I know uh, I have been doing some work on a number of different projects. One of which is to get a programmer to write some code for a special uh, piece of software that's needed in my wife's gardening services business. Um, basically, it's for tracking time of the gardeners in, in the garden and, and staff members and scheduling who's going to go where and so forth. And we actually have some software we've been using that's kind of off-the-shelf software, but it doesn't do everything we want to do. So um, I'm, I'm hiring a programmer to go write that stuff. And I, I actually intended to write it myself, and then I decided, you know what, I don't really want to. I don't, I'm just tired of writing code. I've been writing enough code in my life. I'm done with it. So I'm going to hire somebody else to do it. So that's a win right there. <laughs> that is a win. That is a win. It is. Sometimes you've just, you know, your your code writing meter is pegged. You've had enough. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. It's like, okay, close for the season. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I'm done. So that's a good one. Um, I, I had a, a client who... Uh, I, I've been doing the website design for many years, and I still have some clients whose websites I host. And one of them asked me to make some changes to their site. Unfortunately, it's one of the few sites I did not design, and the code is an absolute mess. But the good news is I'm almost done with that. So I'm really happy that one's almost done. <laughs> oh, that's a good feeling. This yeah. the end of a project. And, and the nice thing is I probably won't have to make any changes for that client for about three more years. So once this is done, it's really done. <laughs> so that's a good thing. Nice. Yeah, but uh, yeah, lots of things, lots of good things have been happening. Um, I mean, it's kind of been a little bit rough for the cats because it's winter time. One of them, is, I know it's a he and I know the name, but we call him this. His name is Joy, and he's called Joy because when we first found him, or actually he found us, we thought he was a female. We named him Joy. We found out he was a male. But it turns out he's an extremely joyful cat, so he's Joy. He continues to be Joy, and I don't care. <laughs> but Joy loves I love it. To be, he I love it too. I really do. But Joy is an outdoor cat. He loves to be outdoors and winter time is really rough for him. So, you know, he throughout the day he's looking for attention, he's looking for somebody to play with, you know, lots of pets and so forth. And he, he just can't get enough love during the day. But on the flip side, it means we're getting plenty of love. We get more love than we could possibly handle. So <laughs> you know, it all depends on how you look at these things, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, and that's a that's what we're talking about today. We are. We're talking about love. In fact, we're using an article that you wrote uh, a few years ago called "The Twenty Two Ways to Bring Love into Your Life." And I know it's like you know four or five years ago, something like that, that you wrote it. But do you remember what the impetus was behind that article? Well, you know, I was thinking about this, and I'm I'm not sure if I, and I'm not even really looking at the at the beginning of the article so i'm not sure if i even put this in there or not but yes i kind of do there was a couple of things um and one of the things was that and i might have written another article about this too but i used to um ride a road bike and you know we would we would go out and ride every day and be riding you know on the road, on a road bike, and you're going 20, 25 miles an hour at some points, and there's traffic, and there's people, and we would ride through the, around the lakes at the college campus, mm -hmm. and, and we would see, so there would be lots of people, lots of runners, people walking dogs, people, other people riding bikes, and just, and you have to be really on your toes, um, and I would see usually sometimes young men, a lot of times young women, college age students riding their bikes and a lot of times they weren't wearing any kind of protective gear, no helmets. Um and I even we even saw somebody on their bike with their phone like have you ever seen someone or done it yourself where you hold your phone with your shoulder like in an office, like an office phone? Right. Put your so your hands are free. Okay, they were riding their bike 
with no helmet and no protective gear, and they were crunching their shoulder up uh, with their phone. They were steering their bike with both hands and talking on the phone. That actually doesn't sound very comfortable. <laughs> well, it's not very – yeah, it's impossible. It seems impossible to me and, and terribly uncomfortable and very not safe. No, no, not at all. Um, and, and what hit me was that I'm talking to people all the time as a coach and as a relationship coach and people that are wanting – a relationship, people that want uh, to have a love relationship in their life. And I thought about these people that are out riding around, and I know this sounds disconnected, but it, it does connect, I, and I'm getting there, um, <laughs> that, that they are sending out a message to the universe, basically, that safety is not their biggest concern. Mm-hmm. And I say that because a lot of times what I hear women say is a, a thing that women often want and want to feel in a relationship uh, is safe. Right. Um, women are going out on dates or they're meeting someone and, or even just being you know, out alone at night, whatever, but women have a desire to feel safe. I mean, sure. I think all people do, but right? And so I thought I had heard somebody say to me, I just want to feel safe. Now, they were talking about in a relationship, but it clicked for me one day riding around and having just talked to a person saying, I really want to feel safe. Mm. And I'm looking mm-hmm. at these other people and I'm saying, you know, if you want to feel safe, then you would be valuing safety and you would be putting a message out to the universe that you want to feel safe. And how do you do that? You would be wearing a helmet when you're on your bike. You would be wearing a seatbelt when you're in a car. You wouldn't be texting and driving. You know, just little things, right? It's like because we can't say we want to feel safe and then go through life putting out all these messages that safety, ah, not safety third. Right? Yep. It's like not, not something I'm really caring about too much. And in the same way, I had those kind of thoughts running through my mind, and I thought how to bring more love into ourselves, into our lives, we have to start with ourselves first. Because when we love ourselves, we're aligning with the energy of being loved. And so if we want to bring more love into our life, that's where we can start. We can start by making sure that that's the message we're sending out is that I'm worthy of love. I love myself. I treat myself well. Um, and that's where we start. This and is so I time- think that's where my... I'm sorry. I was going to say this is a time of year when that's particularly poignant because I mean tomorrow's Valentine's Day, right? And I would imagine right. just from, I I remember this from when I was single. It's the one time when we're if we if we don't have somebody to go out with, we are the least loving to ourselves. And I don't know why we do that, but we do. Yeah, well, I think there's a lot of pressure, there's a lot of expectations. Um, you know, I I've heard Halloween, I mean, Valentine's Day called Halloween. Um, Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> people that are are single. Um, well, certainly in my life, my, my my life early on there was a horror house when it came to a love life, so I can understand it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, people give little snarky names to to Valentine's Day if they're single, and you know, I think that I think I've talked about this on our podcast before, but of a story of one time. This is probably what really did it for me: um, the recognition that. Wherever, however I'm treating myself, uh, and a lot of times it's not really conscious. It's just a habit. Um, but that that's what's going to start showing up in the world for me from other people as well. And it was a story about the time when um, the people that I used to meet with, I used to meet with a little group. We'd meet every week or so. It was kind of a mastermind, but not a business man- mastermind. It was more of a personal growth or spiritual kind of mastermind, kind of law of attraction mastermind. We were mm-hmm. all law of attraction people. Sure. We would get together. We would talk about our wins. We would talk about, you know, what we wanted to create. And and at the time, we would always meet. Sometimes we would meet at someone's house, or sometimes we would go out to lunch, or sometimes we'd just go see an art show or something, and we, we wouldn't even talk about law of attraction. But we always made sure to meet together. We met together for years. And one day I couldn't go because my – My kids were sick, uh, two little boys, and they were both sick home from school, so I didn't go to the meeting. And at that time in my life, I just deferred to everyone. Um, You know, if someone asked me where I wanted to go to to lunch, I would say, I don't care. Let's go where you want to go. 
if someone asked me what Sounds movie like I want to go see. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> right? I would just I never had a preference. And and so that day I didn't go to the thing and we would always decide at the meeting at the end where we wanted to meet next time. And they called me to tell me where we were meeting next time. Now here's the thing, it was really funny. I was standing there washing dishes, I was talking on the phone, it was a quick phone call. And nothing they decided would have been uh, a no for me. It was all a yes. It was all, yes, sounds great. But inside I was getting really, I was feeling really angry, and I didn't let myself feel angry hardly ever, and I couldn't figure out, why is this bothering me so much? Why am I so irritable? Why is this bothering me? You know, I didn't say anything, but I said, okay, great, you know, see you next week. And I hung up the phone, and I was just steaming upset. I was just mad. And I mm. thought, why am I feeling mm. like this? And all of a sudden I realized, well, it was because they didn't even check with me to see if that's where I wanted to go. <laughs> of course and all not. of a sudden, I'm telling you, I didn't hear an audible voice, but I heard this message loud and clear. And it said, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you wanted to be last. You always put yourself last, so I just <laughs> yes. put you last. I did it for you. <laughs> and I just stood there in the kitchen. Like, you know, this was probably 15 years ago, and I remember it like it was yesterday. And I... And it hit me so hard that, oh, my goodness, like, I did this to myself because I, I never have a preference for anything. So people have now stopped asking me, where do you want to go? They don't even check in with me anymore. Why should they? Right. Well, why was yeah. that? Well, this was, because, this was all on me. I mean, I could point the finger and say, oh, these people are rude. They didn't even ask me. Nobody cared about me. Well, you know what? I put myself there. And so that's what this article is really all about. It's like when you start showing love to yourself you know when i started having preferences boy after that i decided if somebody asked me a question i'm going to come up with an answer even if it kills me you know i'm going to dig deep or i'm going to make something up you know i'm not i'm not going to say i don't care <laughs> and so people would ask me where do you want to go for lunch i would just hmm, blurt something out <laughs> i could think I just make something up but you know what happened is that after i started getting some practice <laughs> getting right. back in this point of having preferences I did start having preferences again, and I did start having being able to easily answer those questions, and people started treating me differently. Like, I saw the shift really quickly. People started treating me differently very quickly, hmm. and so that's what this is about. It's nearing Valentine's Day. If you don't have a relationship or maybe you wish your relationship was in better shape, um, here's where you start is start showing yourself the love on a consistent basis. And so we're going to talk about ways to do that. It's funny, too, because that's usually the last place we go when we're trying to figure something out. You know, why is it we're not in a relationship? Why is it that our relationship isn't happy? Or, you know, any of these kinds of questions. The last thing we look at is ourselves. I don't know why we take so long, but we do. And when we start looking at ourselves, what we usually do is we do it critically which is diametrically mm -hmm. the opposite of what you're talking about doing. You're talking about looking at ourselves lovingly. And interestingly enough, that's one of the most difficult things for a human being to do. It's really true. Um, you know, people start looking at themselves, and the first thing they do is say, what's wrong with me that I'm not in a relationship? Right, exactly. And we know that when we ask, you know, coaches ask powerful questions. Those questions are most often open-ended, right? Like the one I just asked, what's wrong with me? So if mm -hmm. I say to my, even to myself, even in my head, what's wrong with me that I can't find a relationship? My brain is going to start working on some reasons for me. That's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? Well, and whether they're there or not, it's like that's the thing <laughs> is that we will find what we're looking for. That's, that, that's the way our brain works. Our brain likes to solve problems. And so... We don't want to ask what's wrong with me. I will tell you right now, nothing is wrong with you. <laughs> nothing is wrong with you. And so we can start, I like what you said, instead of looking at ourselves critically, looking at ourselves lovingly. And yes, and that's, that's kind of the precursor to this, to this list of ideas is that, uh, and once, once we start going through the list, hopefully people that are listening will, you'll start thinking of, things you can add to, to the list on your own. But the, well, the not only that, ho is, hopefully the people who are listening are also going to want to share it too because 
um, and, and subscribe to the podcast at the same time because you're, you're starting to realize this is a pretty good podcast that you've hooked into if this is your first time listening. You don't want to miss any of the others that come down the pike as well because they're all really good like this. They all really touch home. So if you haven't done it already, take the time to subscribe. Uh, you're probably listening right now either to one of the pre-recorded podcasts or to the live podcast. Either way, there are links right there on the webpage where you found us that very easily show you how to subscribe to the podcast. You just click and, you, and it walks you through the process, particularly if you have an iPhone. Um, if you have an Android phone like a, a Motorola, a Samsung, um, Nokia, one of those guys, um, you usually have to install a podcast app first, but you can find that in the Play Store. Just go to the Play Store, look for um, Podcast Manager. That's a nice free one doesn't cost anything download that and then use that to do the search for LOA today and you'll be able to subscribe that way so make sure you subscribe so you continue to get the, the shows and then this is the day before Valentine's Day good time to share you want to have somebody come into your life you want a, a better situation with your, your current relationship why not share tell them hey I found this great podcast you want to listen this is going to be good for you too and we've got all kinds of new links now, Cindy, on the web pages. Every single page has links to Facebook and to Twitter and to LinkedIn and to WhatsApp and to just about every social media app you can think of. So there are no <laughs> longer any excuses. It's not like it's hard now. From now on, it's real easy. You just <laughs> click the one that you use. Boom, it takes you right there. You punch and say, hey, I'm listening to this. It tells you, you know, it already plugs into the URL in most cases so that it links right back. Bada bing, you're done. No excuses. So please subscribe and share. Yes. And, you know, the reason that this is so important is because energy entrains to itself. You know, so this is why when you're around other people who are talking about law of attraction and who are aligning themselves so that good things will show up in their life, um, your energy starts to align with theirs. So when you listen to the show, um, it's an energy lifter. And it's it all about alignment, right? We know that. That's right. Uh, the law of attraction is all about alignment. So, all right. So ways to bring more love into your life. The, the precursor to this list of things that we're going to go through is, that, is intention. And, so, and I did want to say that. So when we talk about um, self-care, you know, you can do a whole lot of self-care without having a whole lot of loving intention. And, and the way I usually describe this to clients to really make, have it make an impact is, is using an example, well, Walt, you've got two cats, and, you know, if, if I lived next door to you and you and your wife were going on a trip and you asked me to come make sure your cats were, had water and were fed and their, you know, their place was clean, I could do that, and I could do it and not love your cats, Right? This is true. I mean, I could come over and I could, look, I could be a total cat hater. Like, oh, sure, okay, I'll do it. And I could come over and say the whole time, oh, I really don't like you cats. But I like Walt. <laughs> and so, you know, I'm going to make sure I do this for him. I want to be a good neighbor. That's my motivation, right? I'm a good neighbor. So, okay, there you got your food. There you got your water. See you guys. Bye. See you tomorrow. Re leave, remind, me right? not to <laughs> remind me not to bring you in to take care of our cats when we go away. <laughs> I'm totally not a cat hater. But, <laughs> I know you're not. <laughs> but the point is, is that when you take care of your cats, you're doing it with love, right? It's true. Yeah. Somebody could somebody could watch one of my children and just make sure they were fed and not be totally lovey dovey with them. But when I'm watching my children, I love my children. So it's that with ourselves. I know. I talk to people. How are you on your self care? Oh, I get a manicure every once in a while, and, you know, they start listing things, right, like getting a manicure and getting a massage or, you know, taking the day off. Or, But I want you to do these things with an intention of love. And you can drink a glass of water with the intention of doing something good for yourself, right? This is Anything true, that yes. we do, if we have a loving intention and we know I'm doing this because I love myself. I saw the greatest, it was like on Instagram or Twitter or something. It was one of those little memes that somebody did. But it said, it was talking about working out and dieting and, and that kind of thing. And it said, don't, <clears throat> don't, not to do those things because you hate your body. Do those things because you love your body. 
Yeah, it's think a very how good many point. people are hitting the gym because they hate their body. Right? Oh, I see it all the time. And, when I take my, my daily yeah. walks, I mean, amazing how many people are running by me or jogging past me with these absolutely pained expressions on their faces. And literally, this is what I think every time. I say to myself, why do you hate yourself so much? Mm. You're putting yourself through so much pain. This is supposed to be for enjoyment. What the heck are you doing? Yeah, so loving intention, that's that's where we are. Okay, let's go. Let's see if we can get. I don't know if we can get all of them, but let's. No, well, probably not. But we can start. do what we what we can. Yeah. So first one I all love right. too. Right. I love it. <laughs> okay. Why don't you read the first one? Okay. Well, the first one says, "Get a hug," and in parentheses, <laughs> "Yes, you'll have to give a hug to get one unless there is no one around." And then I want you to just hug yourself. I'm serious. Just wrap your arms around yourself, and with the same level of intention you have when you cuddle a baby, just give yourself a big hug. Not a pitiful, I feel so sorry for myself, no one is here to hug me type of hug. No, just a nice big, you are so awesome type of hug. Smile when you do it. I love that. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> right? So I read something recently, and it said, um, I believe it was a quote from, um, now I'm forgetting her name, Virginia Sater, I think was her name, right? Famous uh, family therapist. Okay. But the person said, three hugs a day for survival, six hugs a day for, no, three hugs a day for, yeah, survival, six hugs a day for maintenance, 12 hugs a day to, for, to thrive. And I thought, oh my goodness, like I'm in a great, happy, romantic, loving relationship. And I thought to myself, man, 12 hugs a day. I don't know if we're <laughs> even there. <laughs> I remember you mentioned that one other time and I thought to myself, boy, am I living in a deficit. <laughs> <laughs> So it's like, okay, there's your there's your reason. Just make sure you get a hug, and if there's no one around, give one to yourself. Okay, the second one is smile. And take a minute to smile at how clever you are. You know it, right? Think of one time when you said or did something really smart, really clever, really funny, and think about how awesome it felt. Like we were talking last night about telling jokes. And we were t talking about, as kids, we heard people tell jokes all the time. Mm -hmm. And that I haven't heard anybody tell a joke, like, in a while. Like, I don't hear jokes all the time. Um, but you know when you tell a joke and it lands right, and you get it right, and you get the punchline right, yep. and it just, and everyone loves it? It feels so great, right? It does. <laughs> right? So that feeling, it's like everybody's had at least one time where they said something smart or clever or funny, and so... Think about that and just give yourself a smile. I bet, Walt, that you've got – I've heard you talk about this before. So I know you've got some ideas about smiling and how it affects the body. Oh, yeah. And laughter. I mean, you mentioned jokes. Laughter is even 25 times more powerful than smiles, which are 25 more, times more powerful than anything else. I mean, it's just amazing what happens physically in the body. And I, I got this education mainly from my sister-in-law, Yvonne Thiessen. I'm married to my brother, and Iwona is a researcher uh, who is currently pursuing a Ph.D. Uh, I'm not sure what the exact title is. It keeps shifting. I think lately it's biostatistics. But the point is she's done all this research that ties directly into positive psychology and law of attraction in addition to her regular scientific training. And one of the things that she learned is that the body actually interprets laughter in particular, smiles as well, but especially laughter as a signal to heal, literally to heal anything that's going on in the body that needs healing. And indeed, there are people who have pursued laughter cures quite successfully simply by focusing on stuff to laugh at all the time, you know, including they, there are people who have gotten over cancer. They've actually beaten cancer by laughing every day, which is an astonishing thing. And, and it's certainly a lot cheaper than going to the hospital, I can tell you that. <laughs> but yeah, laughing right? and a lot more fun. And a lot I'd more much fun. I'd rather sit, stay here and laugh than Oh, have yeah. Fun. Yeah. So you basically, it's a good idea to, to get out your favorite, you know, your, your favorite comedy tapes or your favorite funny movies or your favorite funny book or whatever it is that you, that you find most funny in your own experience. For me, it's um, Robin Williams uh, in an appearance he made on Inside the Actor's Studio on Bravo TV. That was, I thought, one of his best appearances for like 
10 minutes he was just on he was just completely on doing his robin williams thing of the you know the flights of fancy and constant shift of attention and he's all of a sudden on another topic and you're trying to keep up with him i mean he was it was just brilliant he did this great he thing with, so with the donna karen scarf that was just absolutely phenomenal like the scarf is now one of the most famous scarves in the world because of that routine <laughs> so but it doesn't matter what it is that happens to be my favorite whatever your favorite is Doing the thing of, of just finding that thing and laughing at it, even if you laughed at it before, it comes back. It just it, it makes it so easy. And if you're in a bad place, if you're in a place of depression, you know, you're maybe you're fighting some dread illness, and you're saying, "Oh, I can't ever feel better. I don't know how to feel better," or you're you're dealing with any other kind of really negative thing, you do sometimes have to jumpstart it. The way to do it, I found, is to take one of your favorite things to, to laugh at, put it on, and when it gets to the first part that you know you're supposed to laugh at and you're not laughing, make yourself anyway. Do, do the fake it until you make it thing. And if you do that a few times, you get yourself into gear. And I have found that when I'm in a bad place, if I'm, if I'm feeling really sick or if I'm you know, depressed or whatever, which fortunately it doesn't happen much anymore, but I have certainly been there in the past. And when I've been there and I push myself all of a sudden, I am. I get. I get the laughter wheel going again, and when it gets going, I can feel the stress getting away. You know, just it's like melting away, and I can feel the resistances melting away. So, yeah, you're right. I'm a complete advocate of smiling and laughing. I think that they're wonderful. Well, and you know, I heard a thing. You were talking about fake it till you make it. I actually was reading somewhere that um, when we smile, it starts and laugh. But even just the smile starts the brain chemical, you know, the brain chemistry going of the feel-good chemicals, right? Oh, yeah. Um, the, the chemicals, the brain chemi- chemicals that make us feel better and feel happier. Um, and that this is what I thought was so interesting about the research is that it said even if the smile wasn't real. Yes. Like even if you were faking a smile. Because it's the muscles in your face and in your head that shift that that start you know changing when you smile they actually trigger um the brain chemistry so that's right yeah so you know if you're dreading valentine's day um put on a funny movie yes (laughs) yes and and smile at how clever you are and how awesome you are and give yourself that in fact my sister-in-law yona that's one of the things that she was telling me about she was telling me how uh, researchers can actually visualize through MRIs and various things. They can visualize from the moment you laugh. They can they can visualize the uh, the synapses, the the neurotransmitters that start kicking into gear. They can visualize how that passes through the body to wherever you know any kind of an injury or an illness is, and they can visualize it to the point where they can actually see the healing cells, the white blood cells, and so forth, kicking into gear in that area. They can actually follow all that visually, which is just amazing when you think about it that's amazing that is incredible (laughs) and and the thing that goes along with it is the entire process starts within 90 seconds of you laughing you don't have to wait hours for it to start kicking into gear it happens within the first 90 seconds we are such powerful beings it's really incredible wow 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 okay all right this next one Read some fiction. <laughs> I, I have a reason why I put it on this list, and that's because apparently, you know, I don't know. Sometimes I will ask somebody, usually when I'm talking to somebody who is frazzled from overworking, and that often includes overcaring for everyone else, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. I will say, do you read fiction? And they'll say, no. They always say it like... Uh, <laughs> What do you mean? Do I read fiction? Of course not. And why? Because <laughs> well, they're looking at it as it would be a waste of time. Like, I have all this stuff to do. When do I have time to read fiction? Right, yeah. And right. it made me realize that reading fiction, I mean, why do we do it? It's for enjoyment. There's, I mean, that's why. It's a treat. It's, it's relaxing. It's enjoyable. And that's why we read fiction. And so... Let yourself read some fiction. I put that on the list, and I realized that something I've realized about myself is that I sleep better if I get away from screens, telephones, uh, I mean cell phones and computer screens, TV screens, just screens. Um, After about 9 o'clock at night, I try not to be around them, and even earlier if I can. And so I started reading, 
before I fell asleep for like an hour. And here's what I noticed that I thought was interesting. I sleep much better if I spend that hour reading fiction. That's interesting, yeah. And, and I love to read stuff that's not fiction. Mm-hmm. But somehow, it always gets connected to, I think, to my work life in some way. You know, if it's a business book, it's going to be connected to my work life. It's a, it's a personal growth book, even a law of attraction book, right? Sure. All of oh, these yeah. things, because I'm winding them into, ooh, how can I use this when I'm coaching? And how right. can, you know, But fiction, it's not connected to my work life, and I sleep better. So it's something nice you can do for yourself. And it's kind of your own private world when you're in a book, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. And it's a way of kind of screening out other stuff that you need to screen out, that you need to kind of block so that you can relax enough and start doing the deep breathing so you can actually fall asleep. Yeah. So, Walt, talk about number four. This one always reminds me of you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Number four, go for a nature walk. And while you are out there spying out singing birds, beautiful flowers, big blue skies, majestic trees, recognize what a fabulous part of nature you are yourself. We are made of star stuff, you know. And then go back and repeat number one. Get a hug from yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's very good. And in fact, those are the exact things I like to appreciate. I don't think of my walks as nature walks, but they really are. And those are the things I do. I pay attention to the birds and the flowers and the skies and the trees and, and even the other people. Because what happens over time when I'm doing my walks and I'm playing my uh, positive music list on my iPhone, they start smiling at me. And I don't know why. And then I realize, oh, I must be smiling. Because you're smiling. That's right. <laughs> well, there's a lot to be said for a spontaneous smile that you don't even know you've that's got going right. on, right? It's oh, like, it surprises yeah, you. I mean, yeah. and, and here's something that's really important, particularly for someone who's feeling lonely leading into St. Valentine's Day. And that is, you want to attract somebody else. I don't care if you're a female or a male. It makes no difference. Smile at people. People love to be smiled at, particularly if you, if you have a long history of not smiling at them, and then you smile at them, and it's a really genuine smile. They just turn into entirely different people. Like The, the, the first few times you get these looks like, is there something on my dress? <laughs> <laughs> Is there something on my collar? What did I do? You know, do I have something on my on my face? Did I forget to wipe something off from lunch? And then after a few times, they just they they start lighting up. You start seeing completely different faces just because you smiled at them. And I often say yeah, too, they're... no matter if you're a woman in particular, because women are always the ones who are most beating themselves up about how they look. Right? No matter how you look, I don't care how you look. If you smile, I guarantee you it makes you look 10 times more attractive. Oh, yes. I I saw somebody say I heard somebody say one time that the that a smile was, you know, like a the least expensive facelift. Absolutely. It <laughs> but, is. But it definitely, you know, the other part of it is the energy of the smile is that energy entrains to itself. It's kind of like a hug, right? You can't hug everybody. Uh, but you can smile at pretty much everybody, mm -hmm. and and a lot of times that smile, you'll never know how that will affect someone else's day, and a lot of times you get the smile back, and uh, so that's that energetic alignment again. And when uh, you're as, as shell as, as uh, not shell, what's the word I'm looking for? In, um, not extrovert, introverted. When you're as introverted as I was, I was really in my shell when I was quite young for the longest period of time. When you're in that really severe place like that, it can be a bit of a challenge to yourself to try to smile at somebody, particularly somebody you don't know very well. And and it usually comes off, if you're able to do it at all, it usually comes off as a, as a shy smile. And my advice is don't worry about that. Do it anyway. You know, if it's a shy smile, yeah. that's better than no smile. And the more important thing is even if you don't get a result, and that can be really kind of rough when you're very introverted, if you don't get a response and they just kind of ignore you, don't take it personally. Take it as they were just not in a good place to receive the smile. And then the very next person you see, deliberately smile at them. You have to push yourself to do that. That's not an easy transition to make, but you have to do it. If you do it, you, you basically get yourself into the habit of smiling at people regularly. And this is where numerous scientific studies have shown the same result over and over and over again. They usually do them in workplaces, 
if you have a workplace where they establish the policy that everyone who comes within 10 feet of each other, they smile at each other. And if they come within five feet of each other, they greet each other as they're passing. Any institution that does that sees gigantic increases in productivity, gigantic increases in job satisfaction, gigantic increases in employee retention, and gigantic increases in business, in the amount of business the company does. Smiling is one of the most powerful things you can do. So if you want to do something powerful for your love life, smile like crazy as often as you can. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Uh, I love that smiling. You know, you're talking about in the workplace, if you're coming within 10 feet of someone to smile, that's just a great life rule when you're out in general, wherever you are, right? Oh, yeah, it absolutely is. <laughs> I mean, the reason I, I thought of that particular one, there was a hospital somewhere on the West Coast or Hawaii, I can't remember which it was, that was in really bad shape. They were financially failing. Um, they had high levels of people who were in the hospital, but they weren't getting well. A lot of them were indigent, so they didn't have the money to pay for the bills. I mean, the, the hospital was just in really bad shape. Um, the uh, uh, attrition rate among employees was high. People were leaving work all the time and not coming back. It was just a very, very bad situation. And then somebody came in at a high management level and instituted this policy. And within, I think it was one year, the, pol the hospital had completely turned around. Oh, interesting thing. They had um, a staff meeting to inform everybody what the new policy was. And the doctor said, well, we're too busy hi uh, healing patients. We don't have time for all this smiling nonsense. So the rest of the staff engaged in the smiling behavior. The doctors refused to do it. And interestingly enough, the doctors, despite their intention of not smiling, found themselves smiling more. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't help it, it turned out. That's and so one, funny. One, one of the most fantastic things that happened, well, two fantastic things happened. First, financially, the hospital completely turned around. It went from being deeply in the red to completely in the black and profitable. The doctors stopped leaving. And they, the reasons they kept giving for staying was, this is just such a happy place to work. Oh, wow. The doctors who were <laughs> against it wanted to stay because it was a happy place to work. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, never underestimate the power of a smile. Never. I'm going to be smiling a lot more today just because of this conversation. I I'm smiling tell. right now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next thing, dress up for no reason. Just because you're awesome and it's a day to celebrate you. So, you know, it's put on something sparkly or expensive or whatever you would normally re reserve for some extra special day. Um, good perfume, good cologne. If you're a woman, red lipstick. Or maybe if you're a man, red lipstick. I don't know. <laughs> In whatever. these days, you never know. <laughs> um, whatever you like, right? So it's like just do something special as if, it was a special occasion. The special occasion is you, and the time is now. And then equally, maybe you're somebody who has to dress up. Um, I remember when I was in coaching school, there were several coaches that were coming in to get their coaching certification, and they were people that were in corporate. And then they decided to take the corporate coaching track and it was really funny because some of them, after like two weeks, realized, oh, no, wait, I wanted out of corporate. I don't want to do this because <laughs> they realized they'd have to still be Keep going in every up, day yeah. and dressing up, right? <laughs> so if, if that's you, then dress down, right? right? Take a day where you don't wear the high heels or you wear jeans or, heck, wear pajamas, whatever. Um, be comfortable. I mean, do it because it feels good and you're – you know, doing something nice for yourself. It's funny because these last then, two examples you gave us about dressing up or dressing down reminds me, it used to be many years ago that they used to have like dress down Friday, right? And companies would actually allow oh, that as a right. policy. These days, more and more people at work are not suits. More and more people, particularly like programmers or people who do, you know, the more, uh, I won't call it blue collar because programmers aren't blue collar, but, um, the, the, the non-top managerial stuff don't tend to dress up anymore. And my nephew, Josh, is a programmer. He works for Electronic Arts, one of the big uh, game manufacturers. 
and Electronic Arts, they actually have Dress Up Friday because they don't get a chance to dress up. <laughs> so when you read that about dressing That's up, I thought awesome. that sounds like Josh's company. <laughs> I love that. That's so funny. That's the perfect, oh my gosh, that's the perfect example. That's really wonderful. I'm so glad that you that you shared that. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. You know, you think, and, and they probably love it, right? They do. Like oh, least, yeah. Or some of them, because they have like a reason to like, ooh, I'm going to get dressed up, right? Because it's fun to dress up unless, Unless it's a, you know, a burden on you every day, <laughs> then fact, sometimes uh, it's not as fun. So. J- Josh was telling That's us this great. past Christmas that um, he got transferred to a different per- division within the company, and that division didn't have the Dress Up Friday. He was so disappointed, he didn't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's that's fantastic. I love it. That's so that's so wonderful. All right, we we kind of talked about this one already, but we'll talk about it again. Um, watch a movie that you've already seen, that you mm-hmm. already love, yep. that you know will make you smile and laugh. There you go. Yeah, um, very good. I love the movie French Kiss with Meg Ryan and Kevin Kline. Oh yeah, and and um, I it's just, it's just something about that movie. Almost every part of it, I catch myself just cracking up laughing and this past weekend we were listening we were in the car and we had the radio on NPR and they were talking about uh, rom-coms romantic comedies they were talking about them um, because of Valentine's Day coming up and Mm -hmm. they were playing certain little clips and then they were discussing things about the production or the story or whatever why that why why stories like this you know kind of grab us or whatever and all of a sudden I heard it was the clip from the movie French Kiss. Uh-huh. And I mean they played two sentences and I just couldn't stop laughing. So it's like, yeah, right. that's a movie yeah. that's a movie that if I knew I wanted to laugh, uh that's the one. That's good. So I guess we probably all have those, you know. Well it's good um, to know what the, the go to movies are because when you know what the go to movies are and you're in a bad place, now you know what to reach for. If it's good right? to actually have a conscious like even make a record of it, maybe write it down somewhere. So that when you're in that bad place, then you can say to yourself, stop, I have to do something that feels good. Let's see, what's my favorite movie to watch when I need to feel good, when I need to, to laugh? Oh, yeah, it's, and fill in the blank. Well, and the thing about it, one of the reasons why I wrote it is um, I have two sons, and they're grown now. Uh, and recently, Recently, they were both here together. It's great to have them here at the same time. That doesn't happen very often. Mm -hmm. But the sound of their laughter, (laughs) it's just my favorite sound ever. The sound of someone I love laughing is one of my favorite sounds, and it just never gets old. And so I was thinking about us loving ourselves, listening to our own laugh, and recognizing how, how nice that sounds. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so if you listen, um, if you watch a movie that makes you laugh, pay attention. And it's kind of like a, a wheel that keeps turning, right? It's like you're, you're smiling and laughing at how nice it is to hear yourself smile and laughing. So <laughs> it can be just keep, keep going and going. It also helps um, your significant other when you're in a relationship because my wife, Louise, um, has remarked a lot recently, particularly over the last few months, how much more I'm laughing than I was before. And that literally has happened since we expanded the number of podcasts and brought you and Tom and Wendy on board. And oh, wow. it's, it's just really amazing how much more I'm laughing now than I was before. In fact, it's gotten to the point now where Louise will be in the other room. I'll have the door closed while I'm doing the podcast. And she'll start feeling jealous because I'm having all the fun. <laughs> <laughs> but she also will tell me, that she loves hearing it because she loves hearing, like you say, she likes hearing my laugh. In fact, uh, yep. we even have another thing that she, that it's actually derived from an episode of The West Wing, the television series. CJ and Danny toward the end end up hooking up. And Danny, at one very emotional mo- moment, says uh, that the reason he wants to be with her isn't because she was the press secretary or she's now the, uh, um, the, the what do they call it, the, uh, the, guy, the, the person who... Uh, runs the staff. I can't think what they call that. Um, it, it's not because of any of that stuff. It's because he likes hearing the sound of her voice. And th- that really resonated with us because certainly we both have repeated this. My wife, I can't tell you how many times says, I just want to talk with you because I love the sound of your voice. So when you add laughter on top of that, that just that just accentuates it. 
Yeah, and it's and so how often do do we do that? I think we do it with other people, and we have to be a little more intentional to do it with ourselves. We do, yes. Right. It's like doing um, podcasts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so the next one is eat chocolate. <laughs> oh well, that's a that's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, unless you're allergic to it, or unless I. I don't. I don't think I've ever met anybody that didn't like chocolate. I was going to say, unless you don't like chocolate, then don't make yourself eat it. But everybody I know or have talked to likes chocolate. So I said, you know, in the article, really good chocolate. I mean, chocolate's a traditionally a, a special romantic gift. It's it's a gift we give. Well, you know, not just romantic. We give our kids chocolate, right? Right. Um, for holidays, um, and so it's a special thing. And so somebody had given me some chocolate. And um, it was really expensive, really good chocolate. And I, they brought it to me as a gift, and I said, oh, my goodness, that was like the best chocolate ever. <laughs> and they said to me, oh, I've never had it. You know, I was kind of, I had never had it before. I can't remember what it was now, but I was sort of saying, like, oh, my goodness, like, thanks for turning, on to me, turning me on to this amazing brand of chocolate, right? right. It's so good. And the person said to me, uh, she said, Oh, well, I've never had it. She said, I- I've never tasted it. It's too expensive to buy for myself. Oh, yes. And I was like, oh, no, no, mm. no. Oh, man, go buy yourself just one piece then. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. And then what? Eat it with uh, a loving intention. Mm. And and savor it and take the time to know that you bought it for yourself because it's special. You're giving it to yourself because it's special. Well, that, that's also the point with, um, with, with high-quality chocolate. It's supposed to be high-quality, so you're supposed to spend time on it. You're not supposed to guzzle it, you know? You're supposed to actually enjoy it, take the time to feel good about it and to, and to you know, savor it, like you say. That way you don't have to eat a, 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 you know, a half a pound of it in order to enjoy it. You can, then, you can enjoy it with just one bite and just savor that bite endlessly. Yeah, and that was one of the things that was... Um... I think we skipped one, but it was drink something special. Um, and it could be just pure water, but it could be a special coffee or a special tea or one of those, you know, extra chocolatey thingies with the whipped cream on top. But don't gulp it. Do it with right. intention. Right. Sip yeah. it slowly. Even yeah. if it's pure water, you know, people might say, well, you know, that's not loving to me because I don't want all those calories or whatever. Well, then the best pure water that you can taste or a special tea but you're doing this out of love for yourself, so take your time with it. I think that's so important is that sometimes we just need to slow down, right? Absolutely. I agree. In fact, uh, we really do ourselves a disservice when we don't do it because we really need it. I mean, that's just basic. Yeah. Yeah, basic human needs. Yeah. And these can all fall into the category of basic human needs because the need is, that we're taking care of ourselves and that we're doing it with a loving intention. Exactly. So let's see how many more we can get in here. Uh, well, we've got about eight minutes, so ten. I don't think we'll get them all done, but do what we can. <laughs> yeah, we'll get a couple. Um, number 10 was a manicure or a pedicure or both. Um, and places where people may start saying it's expensive, um, and so I just said, well, just give it to yourself. Give yourself a foot rub. <laughs> mm-hmm. Give yourself um, a hand massage, right? Um, because our hands and our feet really do so much for us. They, they do a lot of work, hard work for us, standing and walking and working. And so I think it's nice uh, to be thankful and give our hands and feet some love. It's very important, and the fact is that it isn't just for women. I mean, I'm not suggesting that a man get a manicure or a pedicure because I know that for myself I could care less about that. But I can give a, a real strong testimonial in favor of going to a spa and getting a massage. That is just wonderful. I don't care what sex you are. That is just relaxing. It is so it puts you so much at ease. You walk away, you say, where did all the stress go? Well, <laughs> it's, it's really worth it. It's a part of it's a big part of physical therapy. Yes, true. Like, if you're in physical therapy, massage is probably going to be part of it. And so it is a, a very 
you know, important thing that we can do for our health. Um, Very true. Okay. Yeah. The next one I had, look into the mirror. Now, this is really hard for some people. It's hard for me. I know um, this one already, and it's like I've tried this, and, and looking there is really difficult. <laughs> yep. Look into the mirror. Take a deep breath. Look directly into your own eyes and say, I love you. Um, say, I love you so much. You're so amazing. Just the way you are. Thank you. Namaste. <laughs> you know, namaste is a Sanskrit greeting that we hear in yoga all the time. At the end of the yoga class, the teacher may say namaste. It literally means I recognize the divine light that is within you. And so if you say it to yourself, I like to say it silently when I meet people, you know, the grocery checker, the bank teller. I like to silently, when, I, when my eye catches theirs, to just say namaste. The, the divine part of me recognizes the divine part of you. Um, but the thing about this mirror work, looking into the mirror, I, took, I went to the hobby store and I bought a chalk marker, um, which you can buy for a few dollars, and it can write on glass and mirrors, and it, it will come right off uh, if you need to take it off. It won't hurt the mirror. But I bought a chalk marker, and I came home, and I wrote on almost every mirror of the house, I wrote, you are enough on the top of the mirror. Oh, that's and good. we have an oval mirror in our, in our um, kitchen, and I wrote, you are enough on the top. Or I wrote, I, I am enough on the top, and you are enough on the bottom. <laughs> That's good, yeah. And uh, it, I thought, you know what? Every time I glance in a mirror, I'm going to see I am enough across the top. And um, I did all the mirrors, but I didn't do the ones on the handsome sweetheart's side of the bedroom. And he came home that day, and he saw the mirrors, and he said, Oh, you didn't do my mirror. <laughs> you felt left out. <laughs> no, you left that on your mirror. <laughs> So I did it on his mirror. So everyone's mirror now says, I am enough. And people often say, I have heard some stories. I, I want to say it was Jack Canfield, but I'm not completely certain. I think so, though. Um, that he started doing mirror work like this, and that in 30 days, all of his negative mental chatter had just completely stopped. Wow. And so I know it, it's really hard for some people to do this. It feels weird. It's like, oh, it feels weird. But after a while, it gets easier. And I think that your subconscious starts picking up the message and saying, okay. Well, something you included there, you, you said the word namaste, the Sanskrit, Sanskrit word, mm -hmm. and then you read mm -hmm. what it meant. I recognize the divine light within you. You are full of divine light. Believe it. And as soon as you read that, I realized that's why I have trouble looking in the mirror. I'd never thought about it this way before. But when I look in the mirror, my first reaction is to giggle and look away. And I'm realizing the reason I'm giggling and look away is, when, well, when I don't giggle and look away, it's because I'm feeling down. And so all I'm just seeing in the mirror is somebody who's, who's feeling down. But when I smile, like you're suggesting, when I, when, when I even try saying, I love you, which I... Rarely try, but occasionally I try to do it. As soon as I say it, I giggle and look away, and I know now why. It's because I see that light. That's what mm -hmm. I'm seeing. And it's, like, overwhelming, yeah. and, and I'm not used to it. So I have to look away because it's blinding and it's too uncomfortable. Like, oh, God, I'm in the light. I'm in the spotlight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's like we're not used to it. That's right. It doesn't feel right to us. It feels weird. It doesn't feel comfortable. It feels awkward. Um but we can practice, and then it doesn't feel so awkward. That's interesting, though. If Jack Canfield, who I respect immensely, said that after 30 mm -hmm. days his self-talk completely changed. Now, I've done a lot of work to change my self-talk, but I certainly would love to change it even more. I, that actually gives me enough incentive to that, try. If, yeah, I'm going to find out for sure. I, I have a friend that, um, that worked, and maybe still does, for years with Jack Canfield. Oh. and. And I, and I keep thinking that she's the one that told me that story, so I'm going to find that out. But, okay. yeah, um, it, Louise Hay was huge on um, Louise Hay was a big, big proponent of mirror work, and she talked about it a lot, too. Uh-huh, okay. So I'm yeah. not sure if we've got time to keep going. Actually, we don't. We're down to our last minute now that you mentioned it. I'd forgotten that. That's what happens with these shows. It's, <laughs> it's just like all of a sudden, boom, it's gone. Where'd it go? <laughs> <laughs> but it's been great. Thank you for sharing with it. Well, let's actually save some of them because I think we could talk about them in, a, in another episode. Maybe we can spend some time tomorrow. 
Oops, it looks like uh, we had a disconnect there. But uh, just want to say thank you for joining us today. And uh, don't forget, to, this evening we will be adding a, another show. We're going to be doing the show with Tom Wells. Tom and I are going to be doing an evening show that's Tuesdays at 9 p.m., Eastern Time, starting tonight, and it, we're doing it because it's an opportunity for you to call in and to uh, basically ask questions, share your wins, you know, just share in the show. We want to hear from listeners, so this is your chance to do it. You can't do it during the day? Fine. Do it during the evening, Tuesday evening. Give us a call tonight, and uh, in the meantime, we will see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.